Well, at this ASCO meeting, we present the results, a reanalysis of the Jakarta 2 study. So the Jakarta 2 study, we conducted several years ago in patients that had failed ruxolitinib. Now that study, uh, the patients that had failed ruxolitinib, it was really a, a heterogeneous group of criteria that at the time really wasn't overly rigorous. Uh, it had been shortly after ruxolitinib had been approved. There had been patients who really had had a very brief duration of therapy with ruxolitinib ahead of time. So we didn't feel that it, uh, the criteria for, for entry fully captured the activity of fedratinib. So we did a reanalysis where we defined ruxolitinib intolerance or resistance in a more modern way, now with eight years of hindsight with ruxolitinib, at least three months of therapy uh, and a certain amount of regrowth of either the spleen, bah, symptoms, cytopenias, etc. Uh, and then second, we look to uh, evaluate the efficacy of fedratum in individuals that at least had six months of therapy. So in, in looking at that group, we were able to look at the larger Jakarta 2 group uh, and then move it down to a cohort of just under 70 patients that really filled both criteria. Clearly had failed ruxolitinib through a rigorous set of criteria and had had an adequate try of fedratinib. With that, we see an over 30 percent response rate for reduction in splenomegaly and improvement in symptoms in individuals that had been significantly pretreated with ruxolitinib and had that fedratinib uh, therapy. Uh, so uh, we thought that was very encouraging, uh, particularly in light of the uh, uh, de further development of fedratinib now held by Celgene.